welcome to New Bedford. For those of you who are not from New Bedford and uh, those of you that are here in New Bedford that are from New Bedford, welcome to take the time to come down to the plant and uh, sort of celebrate uh, the grand opening, although we've been operating now for four weeks here, of the Mariner Seafood Processing Facility here at 14 South Street. Um, I'd like to especially welcome the mayor of the city of New Bedford, John Mitchell, who was recently inaugurated in January of, of this year. Um, and so both of us have something in common is that he's new as the mayor here and, and we're new here in this processing plant uh, together. Uh, a few other people that I want to point out that are here are very important uh, is our, our banker, of course, Keith Kelly from Citizens Bank, Providence, Rhode Island. Um, I've got uh, my, uh, my, my mother here, Helen Flynn, who I, I want to mention that she's also the mother of two, she's the mother of two U.S. Army generals um, that are currently, uh, you know, in Washington, D.C., another one in North Carolina that spent almost 10 years in Afghanistan and Iraq. My wife, Leslie, uh, without her support, I don't know that a lot of things would have been possible over the last 14 years. Uh, I got my son Ryan here in the back, uh, who works here in the building. My daughter Emily, who works over in New Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, and before I uh, go too far, I just have to check and make sure that I haven't forgotten anybody. And I'm going to get into uh, a little bit about the company. Uh, I want, well, first of all, I want to talk about Mayor Mitchell a little bit. I think it's uh, important to understand uh, a little bit about the mayor's background and. and how much we appreciate that he's here today. Uh, as I mentioned, he was, he was inaugurated last month. Uh, he has a, a deep-rooted family history here in the city of New Bedford, I believe. His grandfather was lost at sea on a fishing trawler here. Uh, Alexander was his name. Um, born here in the city, raised in the surrounding area. I went to Harvard University and then I went to law school at George Washington University. I believe he was six years in the reserves, the Army Reserves, which given our family background is uh, commendable because it's uh, uh, anybody that serves in the military these days, and we, we've got a very deep-rooted history in the military, uh, no, matter, no matter what they did or, or, or what their role might have been or their rank, uh, everybody is very, very important. Um, I also want to point out some individuals that are important to uh, the company, which is the staff of the Mariner Seafood here in the back, who just came off the floor to come in to listen, and there's, there's many of them here. <laughs> and, they, and they do deserve some appreciation because I think it's sometimes, uh, their days are long and it's a little bit cold out there, especially this time of the year, and sometimes I, I I don't know if I get a chance to thank them enough. So thank you very much for all that you've done to support this, uh, this business. The history of the company of Mariner Seafood, uh, I can speak to, uh, we started about 10 years ago in Middletown, Rhode Island. At the time, uh, uh, what, what we had put together as a frozen seafood trading company and uh, importing from China and Southeast Asia and bringing in frozen cargo into the United States and Canada. A lot of my customers were based out of the New Bedford area. Uh, I got to know them pretty well. And as times went by, I decided uh, three or four years ago to look more deeply into processing fish here in the city. As it turns out, two years ago, I came up with an idea with the help of Janice Tasso, who's the Vice President of Finance and Operations, to try to identify a location here in New Bedford. There's an individual here that I'd like to point out that was very helpful, who I actually interviewed in a job four or five years ago, maybe longer, his name's John McDonald. And I told him that if I ever started a fresh fish processing plant in New Bedford or anywhere, I'd want him to come to work with me. As luck turned out, some time went by, and lo and behold, John McDonald came to work, and we started a fresh fish division about two years ago here on Hassey Street, which is right over uh, on the waterfront in what's called the Tempest Building. Actually, Eric Orman was very helpful in helping us put, it, put together that, that particular facility. And at the time, two years ago, we were in Middletown processing fish in New Bedford. We took the whole administrative staff and moved them up to Belleville Avenue, which I think it was Jeff Pontiff 
that helped us find that location, who was our real estate agent for this property as well. So as we became more entrenched in the community here, we started to know more and more people. Uh, and as time went on, the Fresh Fish Division grew successfully and uh, has grown quite a lot since we started it. The Frozen Division as well, especially over the last two years. Uh, the idea came up that we should consolidate our offices. We spoke to our bank about this about the middle of last year. Dave Donnelly, who's here, thank you, told me, Jack, don't buy that building. I have another one for you. You need to take a look at it. And, and the, the unique part of this whole story, as I see it, is a, a connection between people professionally that we got to know over the last four or five years that allowed us to, through our relationships and communications, leapfrog the Belleville Avenue building into this building in January. We closed on it in December. A team of people came forward that some of them actually uh, I never met before. One was introduced to me by our welder, Hector. His name is Ben Pacheco. And he came in here. We had a water, water main broken up in the office. There was water pouring out of it. And I said, you got to fix this for me, Ben. I don't think we've ever met before. And the next thing you know, he plumbed this plant, put all of our piping in, and we've got hot water at seven different stations. Abco Electric came in. He knew this property intimately for electricity. He knew exactly where all the drops would go in. He explained to me that he had a grid of the ceiling. And in four weeks after we closed on this building, we got our permit from the state. Two weeks later, we were operating. So it's been a joint effort between a lot of different individuals, um, people that came forward at, almost at the last minute where I, I didn't know whether I was going to be able to get a good plumber who understood what it was we were trying to do. And, and with that, I think over the period of, I think there was not one day where we didn't stop. So I have, I have two other key people that I want to mention that have been instrumental in helping put this together. One of them is a gentleman by the name of uh, Daniel Cardoza Hernandez. Where is Daniel? This guy here was working in a 2,800 square foot piece of property, which is about the size of this area where we were running pro processing fish through there last year. And if you were to take a look at what we have out here, as a matter of fact, he was getting that fish run through that little piece of property, almost exactly the amount of fish that we have out here on this floor today. So as a matter of fact, I, I want to give Danielle a big hand because he worked nonstop. Now he worked nonstop, day and night, coordinating all these different tradesmen that came in and out of here. And there were some days where I really wondered, uh, you know, if he had a home to go to or if he ever slept. Uh, and he does, uh, as a matter of fact. Uh, I, I want to also say Janice Tasso, who's the vice president of operations, uh, vice president of finance and operations for the company, uh, has worked. Uh, and coordinated uh, all the financing, not just for the building, but for the, bu the business itself. Uh, worked with uh, Keith Kelly at the bank. Uh, worked with Jeff Pontiff through the ups and downs of the maybes and maybe nots of the real estate transaction. And uh, I, I can't say enough about how helpful you've been in really being very instrumental in the, in, in the backroom process of getting this done. Uh, I really would like to give a big hand uh, to Janice. Thank you. My wife Leslie, uh, you know, for the for the time that we have uh, been together, I don't think I've, I've ever done anything but be in the fish business. We met; I was in the fish business. Uh, you know the kinds of hours that you have to put in in this business. It's with China; it's twenty four seven putting the plant together, the support that I've had from my wife and my family has been very instrumental in uh, the success of where we are today. And I, I really want to thank my wife. Leslie, thank you. I love you. There's always the opportunity, too, to stop and say thank you to Jeanette, Kim. Uh, Kim's actually the oldest employee of the business. I believe that's...
Jeanette, Jeanette's uh, worked with me for, I would say we met in the mid 90s, Jeanette, where you're over here in New Bedford and uh, we worked in another fish processing plant. And another guy that's missing who's traveled with me all over the world is Dale Frederick who's traveling today, which is what he's supposed to be doing. He's out seeing customers. Uh, with that, Mayor Mitchell, I would like to uh, have, stop and have you say a few words and I really appreciate your time here. And thank you very much Thanks for coming. Much. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is a very happy occasion, and um, I really appreciate the kind words, Jack. Um, well, one part of my background that you left out was uh, once upon a time, I, I worked in a fish house here in New Bedford. It was while I was in college and uh, just making money for tuition and so forth. And um, uh, while I was working there, um, uh, my mother had a rule, and that was because the, the smell of the plant was so penetrating that if I were, to, when I came home, if I wanted dinner, if I wanted to set foot in the house, I'd have to strip down to my underwear on the front porch, uh, and, and uh, because otherwise the house would, uh, would would smell like a fish house over over time. Now, um, what impressed me most of all about this facility is just how how clean and orderly and neat and well kept it is. So uh, I see no reason for me when I return to the office this afternoon to strip down to my underwear on the <laughs> steps of City Hall. So, um, so this is, it's, it's really an impressive place. Um, let me just congratulate you, Jack, and uh, the Flynn family for, uh, for such a great occasion, such a, a great facility. Uh, and thank you for uh, trusting in New Bedford uh, and Citizens Bank for trusting in New Bedford. Uh, this is a great place to do business. This is a great place to be in the fish business uh, for many reasons, not just because of the history here and the know-how here, which is, which is obvious, but uh, because of certain trends that are happening in the, in the, uh, the industry. As Jack noted, uh, we have, uh, the fish business now is more international uh, in scope um, than ever before. Uh, he's spent how many trips uh, to China in the last few years? 35 trips? 95, 35. 35 trips to China. It is an international business, and New Bedford plays a major role in uh, the international commerce of seafood. Um, and I noted, uh, it's especially timely today to note that fact because you know, as you read in the paper this morning, um, there was this deal uh, that uh, appears to have been struck by NSTAR and Northeast Utilities concerning wind farms. Now you say, well, what's the connection? Well, the connection is this. Uh, if with that deal, it makes it much more likely that our South Terminal project will get off the ground um, in the near future, in the next five years or so. Let's, I remain hopeful. But with that will come far greater capacity for import and export business here on our waterfront. And much of that, much of the export business and import business for that matter will be uh, in the seafood industry. And so we'll get to play an even bigger part uh, in that international trade of seafood. Uh, in addition to that, as, as, uh, as Jack um, exemplifies, he moved his business from, from Middletown a few years ago to New Bedford, uh, recognizing that with the consolidation of the fish processing industry in the Northeast, New Bedford is the place to be. Uh, we are, um, uh, Mayor Lang mentioned to me once that uh, one way to look at it is that New Bedford has become uh, to seafood what Omaha was to beef. This is the place where the goods uh, or the raw materials are processed and we've become a leader in that way and will continue to be a leader. The other big thing that's going on too in the industry and that people are recognizing is that uh, city government here in New Bedford, uh, and I will show you that, assure you that in my administration this will be so, but also uh, in the community, uh, there is general support for the fishing industry. We want to stay in the business. And so, uh, you know, this is, my appearance here today is really just to affirm that commitment. Uh, I to congratulate Jack for his investment here, to congratulate all the employees here for uh, for their hard work, thank them for their hard work and congratulate them for, uh, for working in now uh, a real state-of-the-art facility. It's a terrific place. And uh, we welcome all of you. We ask, uh, to ask you to ask us what we can do for you in the future in the way of making your business more competitive and making uh, life for your workers better. Um, and uh, we're, we're here to help. And New Bedford, as I like to say, is open for business and it's true in the seafood industry as it is in other industries. So thank you very much.
Here we go, guys. Let's get this place rocking. Ready? All right. Here it is. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mom? Yes? I've been thinking about it, and I'm not going to go to college. What are you saying? You've got to go to college. Well, they offered me a job, and I want to buy some new stuff, like uh, a new phone, a car. Son, college is much more important than a new car. No, Mom, it isn't. Yes, son, it is. No. Yes. No, Mom. Anyways, it's my decision. Your decision. Okay, well then decide what degree you're going to get because you will go to college. Their tomorrow depends on your words today. The Hispanic Scholarship Fund has the information you need to help your kids go to college and have a better future. tested is the way to take care of their families. That's why real men wear gowns. For a list of the tests you need, go to AHRQ.gov. See where the good goes at goodgoes.org. You locate your nearest shelter, you go down there, and you pick out the perfect match for you. Nate, 